First order, five covers, one sardine, three cream, one broth. Some ash, four liver, one veal for Mrs. C and five veg. When I've made my second million, no, when I've finished building my small palace in Provence, I'll let Gary Rhodes, the chef at the Castle Hotel in Taunton, take over my job. His skill and passion has silenced the music hall jokes and put British food where it truly belongs. Gary was just recently a finalist in a very important gastronomic competition, and it had a French name. I think that's appalling for a British cook. You know, when do we get a grip of ourselves? Why do we have to be called the Munier Ouvrier Gastronomie de Grande Bretagne when we call, could be called a really good British cook? Oh, yeah. Strange, isn't it? Anyway, Richard, watch the man. He's the business. Right, what I'm actually going to do is just uh, quickly prep this up. I take off all the fat from the actual oxtail itself and uh, obviously retain all that fat because I'm a great believer in putting as much of the flavour into everything as we can. So if we get started straight away, Keith, I've got some oxtail fat that's been rendered here. Right, Richard, um, close up here, this is very important. Oxtail cook, fat, OK. Cook that down so I keep the maximum flavour. When it's fried, we're putting oxtail flavour back into the oxtails. So that's the most important thing, okay. firstly. So if I stick a little bit of fat in here, we we'll start to get these oxtails right. on. OK. Notice all trimmed of fat now, but the fat's been rendered down. These have obviously previously been seasoned with salt and pepper, and in they go. So, I think that'll do us for now. Right. And what do we do? We just brown those off? We're going to brown those off, almost like roasting them on top of the stove. Get a nice, good colour of those, seal all the flavour in. And as I said, using that oxtail fat, keep as much flavour in there as possible. So we just let those turn in there for a couple of seconds. All right. Cool. It's going like a train. What we need is some... Uh, Mirepoix of vegetables. Mirepoix. Now, hold on, I'm going to take you to task now. We're right. cooking a British meal, and you oh, use dear. French <laughs> words like mirepoix for chopping vegetables. It's just something I think... Chopped vegetables. vegetables. Chopped vegetables. Chopped root vegetables. So we've got some onions, celery, carrots, leek in here, all that flavour that we're going to put into these braised oxtails. Right. So we'll just quickly turn these in the pan. Turn them over, getting a nice bit of brown colour onto these, sealing all that flavour inside. Beautiful, meaty oxtail. So as soon as these are actually browned off, we'll put them into a colander, drain off the excess fat. One thing I don't want is putting the excess fat into our uh, sauce, as that will end up with a fatty looking sauce. So, let's give them a turn now. You go ahead, you're the governor. Right. Once these are just nicely sealed, We'll get the vegetables in the pan to bring off any of the residue from the base of the pan. Right, putting that into the sauce itself. So we're going to strain that oxtail into here, then tip the fat back into there again. Well, there'll be enough fat to bake in the bottom of there. We right. may need a little bit. So if we can get those into there, I'll get the vegetables in. OK. Now, the important thing is here, as the man is saying, when we cook our vegetables... Sorry, Richard, were you asleep for a second? The point is here, when we cook our vegetables, we're going to cook them in the oxtail fat. That's very important. At the same time, Gary's making a point, for those of you who are cholesterol conscious, that the fat is going to be drained away from the meat itself, so the fat does not go into the ultimate sauce. That's very important. But the fat is used for enhancing the flavours. Right. And by God, it's hot in this kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yes. If we can just get these vegetables into the pan, just some, enough to take the residue off the base there. Right. And we'll fry those off for a couple of seconds, and then we'll swill out that pan, deglassing the pan with a little bit of uh, white wine, again, to lift everything off the base there, not wasting anything at all. Right. Now, do we want these to take colour in any way? Just a slight colour. Just a slight colour. It's really just actually to moisten them a little bit in there. The most important thing here, cooking oxtails really is, seems to be a three-day event. It's not something that you can really just throw into a pan and neglect and leave. It's something that has to be mothered. Really, the dish has to be mothered. So we start off by making a good oxtail stock, which we have on here. That stock will cook out for at least a day. Um, and then we'll just reduce that stock down until we're left with a good, shiny glass, which is what we have in there. It's reduced down like that. And for those of you who don't know what a three-day event is, phone up Princess Anne, because that isn't where it's at, OK? Ah. So, if we put those vegetables now, if we take those from the pan, we can put them into here and just... On top? Again, yes, on top of there. Right. Just draining off that fat once more. And if we can just take a little bit of white wine, 
Oh, right. And this is called rinsing out the pan with white wine, or as we say, deglacer la puella. Oh, yes. So just putting that there. Bring it off the base. Now, this makes sure, in our economical way, we're not losing one smidgen of flavour. We've had the fat, we've had the wine to make sure it comes out of it. It's all there. It's economic and it's delicious. Right, right, so right phase just, next. Right, pull a pan on. Let's get this on the go. Now, we've drained out... All the fat. All, all the, the fat, fat has gone. All the fat we have yeah. is now drained from there into another pan, which is slightly warm. Don't put anything into a cold pan. That's the first mistake. And in there with our deglassed wine. That's enough. Now, what I actually need is... Can you just see him there? I mean, off the bass guitar, laying it down. I mean, it's like that, isn't it? Um, what I've actually got here is some tomato. Again, I only like to use the flesh of tomatoes. No tomato puree. Let's just use the flesh. You can leave the skins on if you want to, but here I've actually chopped some up roughly, just to put in there. I just want to get the flesh flavour from the tomato into the sauce. So we can add a little bit of tomato at this stage. So there. Now, in just... terms of rock and roll, though, I mean, this is not... Is this Maybelline? Is this... I mean, where is this dish in your, your sort of feelings? Is that the heart of the British stomach? Or is that... Um, I can't think of a really good question to ask you. The kitchen's so hot here. Tell me well, about I this dish. I really do believe that this sex. is the heart of British cooking. This is what British cooking is all about. Uh, I think this holds all the fundamental elements of good cooking. It really does. I think cooking things on the bone, and particularly a thick bone like this, there is far more skill in actually cooking this than in cooking any duck breast or chicken breast that you might get in France. With this, the degree of cooking for oxtails has to be absolutely perfect. Uh, it has to be tender but not falling off the bone and stringy, and you can't allow to undercook it where it's tough and you can't even get it off the bone. And all so of that takes about perfect. three hours. Shut up. It takes about three hours. You've been bossy enough. Right. It takes about three hours. My director will dream up some little interlude. We will have a glass or maybe even a cup of tea, and we'll be back when this is beautifully cooked and tasted. Look so, in there, Richard. Slow and cooking in the oven. There it is. That was an amusing interlude. Whack the thing on the plate, I've been. What have you done in the meantime? I've strained out the sauce into there, added a little dice of vegetables, same that are in there, but nice and small, just cooked with a little bit of butter, a little bit of onion and tomato and also thrown some parsley in. I think if we could just put that up. Yeah. I think it's a nonsense to start sprinkling things with uh, parsley. Let's put it in and get all the flavor out. So here we have typical British cooking, very rustic on the plate, full of color and a lovely shine to the sauce. This is what oxtails can do for a sauce. So I'm just gonna nap this on top. And here I hope we have Britain's signature dish. Absolutely oxtails. brilliant. Richard, sniff into that. If only the camera could sniff. Oh boy, it smells so good. But I tell you what, you know, if food was paintings, this wouldn't be a Van Gogh. I mean, he encapsulated the spirit of Provence. This would be a, what? A Joshua Reynolds, wouldn't it? Difficult to find, a bit in the attic, absolutely brilliant and truly British.